So for the past week or so, we've been talking about accents, learning different accents and some of the considerations that you may want to bear in mind if you're doing just that, maybe for a radio or TV advert or maybe something that you're going to be doing for a professional or amateur dramatics, whatever it happens to be. Hopefully the last week or so's tips are of use to you. If you've only just joined us, welcome to the show. Uh, there's uh, more than a 100 other episodes that you've missed, but you've only missed them temporarily. You can go back back and listen to those of course. Now today we're moving on to diction. So if articulation is the process of moving the jaw and tongue and lips and palate to produce different sounds, diction is the use of those different packets of sound to create understandable words. And my plea to you today is don't be a dick with your diction. Now, again, as I've said several times, I'm not saying you must or should change the way you speak. I'm just putting these ideas out there to be of some help if you want to change. And remember, it doesn't really matter how you sound as long as your target audience understands your message on the mic and ideally acts upon it. That is, what you say and how you say it causes them to say, trust you, buy from you or be moved by you in some way. Some misarticulations are because of a physical impairment and it's not my role or expertise to advise on issues such as dental work or cleft palates or nasal issues, certainly not stroke recovery and so on. And for those issues, you should obviously consult an appropriate medical professional uh, such as a speech or ENT specialist. Now, we know how to form individual sounds, we need to combine them to create recognisable words and with them build sentences so we can communicate. And it should also be said that deviations from what has in the past been referred to as proper or standard English are now properly recognised as accents, often reflecting someone's culture, heritage, age and upbringing, quite rightly. And it's certainly not the point of, of, of me, my podcast or the book that I'm writing about all of this to rule on how you should speak. Not a, not, not a jot, not an iota. It's just to give advice on achieving that standard sound should you so wish. And it could also help, as I've said before, to, to know a bit more about the area in which you're hoping to make a living or a successful hobby. It's, it's a bit like armchair chefs who read cookery books or those who read about car mechanics. You may not intend to make every recipe or strip down an engine, but it's useful to know what's going on under the bonnet or the hood all the same. And remember, when we use our voice, it's in anticipation of communication, to entertain, inform, persuade. If the receiver doesn't understand the message you're trying to deliver or that message is scrambled because of their preconceptions they made about you because of how you sound then you've been unsuccessful that may be their fault rather than yours but it's still unsuccessful communication tomorrow the US waitress who didn't understand my UK accent as Get A Better Broadcast, Podcast and Video Voice continues. From London, I'm Peter Stewart. <laughs>